presence of light only we are able to see the objects around us. There are many colorful as well as different objects around us. Suppose you are traveling to the school on a bus or any other vehicle. On the way, you see many different types of objects. How are you able to see all these objects? Have you ever wondered how are we able to see all, all these objects? Not because only we have eyes. It's because there is light. Light helps us to see the objects. That is the reason when there is dark or when there is power cut, we will not be able to see the objects. So whenever there is dark, we either switch on a torch light or we put some inverter and generators or we light a candle for the purpose of light. So without light, things cannot be seen. So light is a very important thing. So what is light? Light is a form of energy which helps us in seeing the objects. Agree everybody, right? It is a form of energy which helps us to see the objects. So when light falls on an object, suppose light falls on an object, then some of the light gets reflected. Light falls on an object, gets reflected, means falls like this and go back. Falling like this and go back is reflection. So when light falls on an object, some of the light will be reflected. That means it hits the object and goes back. That is reflection. That reflected light comes to our eyes. So whenever if I want to see the board, light will come fall on this black board. Light will come fall on this white board. It gets reflected into my eyes so that I will be able to see this board. So same way when light falls on an object, some of the light gets reflected back. The reflected light comes to our eyes and then we are able to see the object. Understood everybody, right? The light source falls on the object, gets reflected back into our eyes so that then we will be able to see the object. So that is how light it is. The light is a form of energy. Then what is a luminous object? An object which produces light is known as the luminous object. Luminous means light. So object which produces light is a luminous object. That is why in the TVs usually we see advertisements of tube lights and bulbs, right? There they will be using the term luminous. So that is the reason object which produces light. And examples of luminous objects can be sun, bulb or torch light. These produce light, right? Sources of light. So these are luminous objects, tube lights, bulbs also. Then what is a non-luminous non object? Object which doesn't produce light is a non-luminous object. So moon, like sun produces light and gives us light. Whereas moon doesn't give us any light. So that is, it is a reason why it is a non-luminous object. Then how does the light propagate? How does the light travel? Propagation of light is, how does the light travel? One thing what you have to remember is anywhere on the earth, light travels in a straight line. So from the sun also to the earth, the light always reaches in a straight line. So light always travels in a straight line only. Suppose you have lighted a candle and you have put a pipe here. So from one end to other end, how can you see? Only when the pipe is placed in a straight line direction. Suppose if the pipe is curved, will the light pass in a curved way? No. Light passes only in a straight line direction. So that is how light, it proves that light travels in a straight line. If you put a curved pipe and see, you will not able to see the light on the other side. Whereas if you put a straight pipe and see the light from the candle, then only you can see from both the ends. So this is about propagation of light. Light always travels in a straight line. Then we have many objects around us. They are categorized into transparent object, translucent object and opaque object. Earlier classes also, we have understood what are these. But let's repeat again. Transparent object means objects that allow light to completely pass through them so that we can see the object clearly. Object which allows complete passage of light is a transparent object. We can see clearly through the transparent object. What can be the examples of transparent object? Glass windows, glasses or a butter paper. Butter paper used in baking cakes, right? So transparent object is such object which allows the light, passage of light through one, sur one surface to another and we can see the images of the objects clearly. <coughs> Glass, window, butter paper are the examples of transparent object. Next moving on to the translucent object. Objects which allow the partial passage of light. But the image will not be particularly very clear. We can see the image but not very clearly. So objects which allow partial passage of light are translucent objects. 
completely passage of light allowing objects are transparent partially which allow light to pass through them are translucent so we can see the object to the translucent we can see the translucent object but the vision will be faint that means clear image will not be seen through the translucent objects image will be seen but not clearly only partial faint blurred image will be seen suppose if you take a sheet of white paper and try to see the light behind you you can see the light but exactly you cannot see the exact shape of the bulb or the tube light like that so anything when seen through a sheet of white paper gives us a faint image not a clear image only a blurred image so such objects are translucent objects then what are opaque objects objects which do not allow light to pass through them and we cannot see those objects objects which doesn't allow the passage of light is called an opaque object we cannot see through opaque objects so this is a white board can i see what is behind this white board no right so rubber ball pencils boards chalk piece scale all these things are opaque objects which do not allow light to pass through them next comes shadows so when light falls on an opaque object what is opaque object object that doesn't allow light to pass through them so light falls on an opaque object a dark patch is formed on the other side of the object so if on this opaque object light is falling one patch one another image is formed on the other side of the object if a screen is present on the other side so suppose this is an object and here light is passing on this object this is a screen behind this whiteboard acts as a screen behind so a part a dark patch will be formed on this side of the object so this is an object right when light is falling on an object back side this whiteboard acts as a screen so on and this is an opaque object which doesn't allow light to pass through them so when light hits on an opaque object and when there is a screen white board acts as a screen here so when there is a white board like a screen here so there will be a dark color patch formed on this object that will be nothing but a shadow so same way if there is any opaque object standing like this and when light comes and falls on this object and is, if there is a screen behind then this image will be formed as a dark patch on that screen that is nothing but a shadow so when light falls on an opaque object a dark patch is formed on the other side on the other side of the object if a screen is present on the other side it is mandatory that a screen should be present on the other side so that is how a shadow forms so what are the main things needed always for the formation of shadow source of the light an object and a screen clear right so whenever we walk on the roads we see the shadows of ourselves of the buildings of the trees in the school we see shadow of the benches shadow of the chalk piece sometimes your books everything right your shoes so how shadows form usually so size of the shadow depends on the distance from the source of light so this thing if it wants to form a shadow the distance from the, how far it is from the source of light matters and angle on which the light rays fall so how in which angle angle is you understand no 90 degrees 30 degrees you have different angles so size of the shadow size means what measurement of the shadow depends on the distance of the source of light so how far is the source of light which is falling on the opaque object and angle of angle on which light rays fall on the object so from which angle it is forming suppose it is falling from 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees or more than 90 degrees that angle also matters so size of the shadow depends on the distance of the source of light and angle on which light rays fall on the object so we can say that if the source of the light is closer so if this is object the source of the light is this much far only then the image will be large so the shadow form will be large if the source of the light is closer shadow is larger if the close source of the light is far shadow will be smaller okay next depending on the light angle of the light angle of the incident light is smaller if the angle of the incident light is smaller then shadow is longer and if the angle of the incident light is bigger shadow is smaller vice versa so when i am talking about angle of incident light what is angle of incidence angle of incidence means angle made by the light wave hitting a surface and line perpendicular to that surface angle made by the light wave hitting a surface light wave hits the surface and line perpendicular to that surface and what line arc comes as perpendicular to that surface is angle of incidence so suppose this rectangular shape object is a glass 
and this is the light wave coming and falling to it. So this angle which it makes is known as the angle of incidence. So this forms the shadow, right? Understood everybody what is angle of incidence? Angle made by the light wave hitting a surface and lying perpendicular to that surface. So this is an object and this is a line hitting the object. So what is the perpendicular line? What is the angle between this perpendicular line and the light light from where it is falling? This is this angle is known as the I, known as the angle of incidence. You will learn more about the angle of incidence in the further classes like 7, 8, to 9. So angle of incident light also determines the size of the shadow. So if the angle of incident light, so the light, the angle here if it is smaller, then the shadow will be longer. So if this angle is bigger, then the shadow is smaller. So that is the angle of incidence. Angle made by the light wave hitting a surface and line perpendicular to that surface is angle of incidence. So if the angle of incidence is small, shadow is long. If the angle of incidence is big, then the shadow is small, vice versa. So this explains the reason why our human being, why our means here, why human being shadows are longer in the morning and evening and shorter in the noon. So in the afternoon time when there is very much sunlight, at that time our shadows are smaller. Whereas in the mornings and the evenings, our shadows are longer because the distance from the sun matters here and angle of incidence also matters. So this explains why our shadows are of different sizes in the morning, afternoon as well as the evening. So shadows form when an opaque object comes in path of the light. So a light is coming, this is an opaque object which doesn't allow light to pass through it. So when an opaque object is coming in the path of the light and when there is screen behind then only shadows form. Shadows gives us some information about the shape of the object. So when a shadow is forming, so you can outline the shape of that on that screen. Then that gives you an image of size of the how the, this object looks. So shadows give some information about the shape of the object. Suppose this shadow is forming on this screen, you can outline that image. And then that gives you the some knowledge about the shape of how this object is. So shadows give some information about the shape of the object. Suppose we are on the screen, any object shadow is forming. Taking a pencil, you can outline the borders of that shadow. Later, that will give you a brief knowledge about the image. That is what shadow it might be. Suppose this is a pointer stick. Then if you can outline, you can say this is a stick shadow. Same way if you have uh, having a notebook. Then the, if there is a screen and the notebook shadow is forming. And if you can outline it, you can say the shadow is of notebook. Same way we see buildings shadows, tree shadow, depending on the tree shadow we can say oh this is a tree shadow right so on the outline of the, that is the outline shape of the shadow also determines what shadow it is, which type of shadow it is, which object shadow it is like that but sometimes shadow also mislead us about the shape of an object so not, not it is always not compulsory that the shape of the shadow gives you the knowledge about what object it is Suppose if this shadow falls, you can see clearly see here shadow is forming. You can say this is a stick. But sometimes if you do with your fingers any shapes like this, so some if there is a screen behind, some image will form, that is shadow will form. But that shadow can give you an interpretation of some other object. How you know? Sometimes shadow mislead us about the shape of the object. How few shadows we can create with hands and make believe that they are the shadows of animals. So you might Sometimes, suppose if there is a power cut in the night times in your houses, what you do? You make some images with your fingers and point it towards the screen like that. So that gives you an image like it is a head of some animal, right? Like this people do images, shadows of uh, an deer head, rabbit head, dog head. With the help of your fingers, you manipulate your fingers in such a way that the shadow on the screen looks like it is the head of some animal, like say dog, deer or rabbit. With your fingers you do that art. So in that cases shadow mislead us about the object. So you cannot say that the shadow is of fingers. You can you will feel that the shadow is that of the animal's head. So shadows also mislead us about the shape of the object. Sometimes shadow gives us the correct information about the shape of the object. But sometimes with your fingers if you manipulate the shape of the shadow, it, it misleads us. So you can do many animal heads with your fingers. Whenever there is dark, whenever there is a wall also acts as a screen. 
So whenever there is dark, if you have switched on a candle, you can make different shadows with your fingers, right? Many might have, you, many of you might have done that, making the shapes of head of different animals with your fingers. That is also an art, a shadow art like that. So this is about shadow. There is one more activity, pin pin hole camera. So we will see how pin hole camera is made and how we can see the how light light passes through that pin hole camera. We will see and how shadows are formed.